Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another movie review. Today we are talking about IT Chapter 2. Um, I'm going to go ahead and preface this whole review with, uh, it was okay. I mean, <laughs> I've heard several people say it like that. That's exactly what we're looking at. Um, it's nowhere near as good as the first one. It is still leaps and bounds better than the 1990 version. Um, that there are so many problems um, I had and so many great elements that most of this review is going to be a spoiler review, but don't click away just yet. What I'm going to do is after the intro, sorry, after the outro, um, like if, you, if you're not familiar with my channel, I do spoilers after the outro, so once I say goodbye to everybody, that's when we'll jump into the spoilers section. Um, here in the front matter, <laughs> the prefatory matters, uh, the, this this movie has pacing issues, yes, um, but there there's a huge there there's there's a there's a huge problem there's an uh, uh, to say <laughs> to, to in Richie's own words the elephant not in the room there is stuff missing from this movie you can tell that there is stuff that Muschietti wanted to put in it if I'm pronouncing his name wrong I apologize I'm terrible with names. Um, Andy Machete, the, the director of the film, you could tell that there was stuff in there There was supposed to be more to it. So I do not agree with everybody barking about how the movie's too long. The movie felt incomplete to me. The movie felt like there was too much chopped out of it, especially that first 45 minutes. You blow right through character introductions. We don't know these people. We don't know the, the Losers Club as adults. And each one of them get a very quick scene um, and then the movie you know continues on to its plot um, which is another problem that I have which we will talk about you know in the spoiler section there is something to be said about the passion that went into this film um, you could tell that Machete wanted to he, he wanted to do it justice you can also tell that his hands were forced in some places uh, because these issues were not in the first film. These issues were not in his, his, his first film, his first feature-length film, Mother. These issues were not there. Uh, so the only thing I can, I can see, the only excuses I can see, because I believe in him as a director, even though Mother wasn't terrific, still a good movie, I believe in him as a director. Um, so I, I, want, I want to believe that it's a matter of it being, you know, cut to pieces by a, in a studio going, you need to trim this down. This isn't Avengers Endgame kind of thing, you know. Um, but then at the same time, you have scenes in the movie that are just that that either make no sense in in the in the rules of the world, or you have scenes that serve the the only purpose is to seemingly make you laugh at scary situations. That's where I'm going to say that this film feels more like a parody version of the first film. Like someone, you know, like, you remember Scary Movie 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever? You remember those movies? That's almost what this feels like. And having Bill Hader, um, do, he does a fantastic job, by the way. Don't get me wrong. But having Bill Hader on the cast, it almost felt like the whole movie was an SNL sketch. 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 Uh, SNL sketch. And Bill Hader, hands down, is probably the best part of this movie. Um, and I've, I've heard everybody say it, and they're absolutely right. Richie's character arc is the best character arc in the movie, but it's the only character arc in the movie. Nobody is given, nobody else is given a chance or backstory enough that you care about these people. And since they are completely different people than their childhood counterparts, that is a huge issue. That's all I'm saying in the non-spoiler section. Um, do, I don't even recommend going to see this one in theaters. Uh, I, I would probably just wait till it comes out on DVD or Blu-ray or 4K or 12K or whatever the hell out is, is out now. I just I don't think it's worth a movie theater price, which is unfortunate because I know that Andy Machete wants to cut the film into one big supercut. Um, but that I can't judge it on that. I've been warring with this ever since I since ever since I saw it. But 
he he wants to cut it into a six hour plus movie and just have that in cinemas, um, which which could work. I mean, we we binge content on Netflix and Hulu and all that stuff all the time. So you know, what's a what's a six and a half hour movie if there's an intermission kind of thing? Get up, stretch your legs and whatnot. But um, it, I can't judge it that. And once the uncut version, if we ever get the uncut version. I will judge that, but right now I don't recommend the movie. Unfortunately, um, I've seen it, some people say they absolutely loved it, but what they loved about it is not, you know, it is not something that I think everybody will love about it. Um, especially some people are saying they loved it because it was so weird and different, um, and it is different. It's not your average horror movie. Uh, there's plenty of new monsters and whatnot, but that is sometimes to the detriment. But we'll get to that in the spoilers section. So if you've seen It Chapter 2, um, <laughs> I'm saying goodbye to people who are probably going to hang around, but have you seen It Chapter 2? Let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, do you plan on seeing it? Have you seen it? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Whatever. Uh, just don't be rude down there in the comments. Uh, let me know what you thought of the structure of the film especially. I want to see if anybody thought that the structure of the pacing was any good um, because everybody that's what everybody's complaining about. Uh, but until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Stephen King movie review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Okay, so spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. I'm going to talk about some very pivotal scenes. I'm going to ruin the ending. I'm going to talk about everything in this movie that either bothered me or made me, you know, made took me out of the film um but first i'm going to start off with the good spoilers so there, there's two scenes in here that i absolutely fucking adore um i absolutely loved the opening of the movie is spot on with the book uh people right now are trying to cancel uh the movie uh because it has a the gay bashing scene at at the beginning of the movie um it's a bit of social commentary i it it boggles the mind why anybody would have a problem with it beyond their own like trigger uh, b beyond maybe if they were they were beaten up it it shows I mean these things do happen and it's shown as an ugly ugly violent thing so I'm not I'm not it's not glorified in any way so I'm, I'm confused on why people have a problem with that but I was giddy as hell watching the Adrian Mellon scene um, because they got it so perfectly right they got the hat they got everything was right I just I I, lo I was I was sitting there literally vibrating with happiness because that I, I thought if they're gonna get this right the rest of the movie must be glorious also. Unfortunately, that's not how I felt. But I also loved loved the ending after Mike's uh, reveal. Um, I we're gonna talk about that here in a second. After Mike's reveal of the the ritual of Jude is is just bullshit. Uh, or at, you know, what, what, whatever that scene was. <laughs> After that, I loved it. Once Pennywise became the de the demon uh, spider thing, which funny, oddly enough, Machete said that he was not going to do a spider at the end of the movie, and here we have Pennywise spider creature alien thing, which was I thought was epic. Um, there's there's going to be some people complaining about how silly and stupid it was, but. I thought they blended the spider and Pennywise together, and yes, it is a CG monster, so it, it doesn't look realistic, but I thought it was brilliant, and they even used the tearing of the heart this time, and the whole group crushed, that was great. I loved the beginning, and I loved the end. Now, let me talk about a scene that I absolutely fucking hated. I, I was so mad. I'm still kind of upset about this. Uh, Machete is, is a great... Uh, is a great filmmaker when it comes to visuals, but he tends to go over the top when it comes to scares and comedy. Um, well, sorry, not the the scares. He he tends to do too much with the scares. He tends to show too much, is what I'm saying. Um, with with this one, they completely and utterly ruined one of my favorite scenes in the book, which is Bev going back home as an adult and meeting Mrs. Kirsch. That scene is fucking terrible. The everything about that scene is terrible. From the time she gets there, it there's way too much comedy in that scene. That scene is great because it builds dread. The 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 original that's the only scene in the entire runtime of it chapter 1 and it chapter 2 that the 199 this this ver version, the version that Earl reviewed, uh that version that they 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 did better. 
they they did it. You know, the it, you need to run, Bev. You need to run, run fast, run far away. That that thing. In this one, she. Uh, in in this one, Mrs. Kirsch, Kirsch is turned into this like comedic entity, or she just in there staring. Staring at what there was nothing creepy about it, and then her running around the apartment butt naked was stupid as shit. Her doing her little dance or whatever the hell it was, uh, it it wasn't it wasn't creepy, it wasn't scary. And then the absolutely unneeded jump scare of the the huge hag like thing running out, it di it didn't make any sense to me as far as the theme of the the movie went. And with Bev. Why was Bev scared of the old woman? Why was that a fear that Pennywise would have used? I don't understand. I, I don't get it. That that scene was utterly ruined for me, and I was mad for at least another 15 minutes afterwards. Um, of course, I'm I, maybe I'm exaggerating, but it felt about that long for me. Um, that I was just upset. And I don't even know what scene comes after that movie, because I, not movie, but that scene, because I was just mad. Um, after seeing Adrian Mellon scene done so well, and to have the curse scene just completely destroyed for me, that really pissed me off. But, these are my own expectations. There, there are other problems, there are actual problems with this movie. Like I said, the, the whole bit, uh, at the beginning, they just rush right through the, the character introductions. Um, and then you, you get to the clubhouse, and it's not until you get to the clubhouse that it starts to feel... It, it start, you start to feel those notes of the first movie again, and that's because the kids come back. The major problem with this movie is the fact that you don't get to bounce back and forth like you do in the book. And I knew that was going to be a problem. I said this, I said this years ago when I heard that they were going to split the movies. I said, this is going to be an issue because that, that all the character development for the adults is watching them react to their own memories of their childhood them reliving those things, and you just don't get that feeling in this one. Um, there's some atrociously stupid scenes uh, in, in, in the film, and I think the reason for that is maybe some of the logical stuff was cut out. Um, another thing is, and this is supremely odd, there are cut scenes from the first film in this one um, that really don't serve much of a purpose. Uh, there's a scene with Stan's, I think it's his, is it, I don't want to, I don't want to get this wrong and upset somebody, but is it his bar mitzvah or confirmation or, I, I'm not, I'm not familiar with Jewish culture and religion, so my apologies. It's when Stan is given a speech as a kid. That was cut from the first movie. I know it's on, it's on my Blu-ray copy, um, as a deleted scene, but it's in this movie. With all the stuff that was, that had to be cut out of there, I mean, I don't even think it added to Richie's story arc, because it's not adding to Stan's story arc, it's adding to Richie's story arc. Um, another thing is, uh, and I loved Richie's story arc, by the way, Lo loved everything about that, this is the best part of the movie. Bill Hader's best part of the movie, I think, other than Bill Skarsgård, he did, he did a, uh, another great job as Pennywise, even though this time they show him way too much, and way too much in the daylight. Um, he's just all over the place. And there are some scenes where it, it's, a, it's actually silly. But going back to the introductions, you don't get that feeling, you don't, there, there's no, you, you don't, you don't feel like you know uh, Stanley's wife. Stanley's wife doesn't even find him. Um, there, there's no emotional connection there to him because they nerfed Stan in the first one. You didn't really have a connection to Stanley in the first one. Um, so Stanley was just a, a, literally a, a, a toss away character. He's just thrown away. Um, with, uh, Mike, I didn't like the actor who played Mike. I think he was far too over the top. Um, James McAvoy was just serviceable. Uh, Bill Hader killed it. Uh, Jessica Chastain killed it. Um, the, the guy who played Eddie, I don't know his name, I apologize. He was great. I, I love that. But I, I think the biggest problem, I, and I've probably said this numerous times already, that each one of these things is the biggest problem, but there's a lot of big problems. So, I apologize. Um, but it just keeps coming back to me that this movie feels like a parody. It is way too funny. Way too funny in the important scenes. In the first one, most of the time, it was Richie goofing off, or Eddie, Eddie and Richie's goofing off, going back and forth, um, was, was great. But you had your scary moments, you had your terrifying scenes. In this one, every single damn scary scene had a laugh moment. 
every single com every single horror scene had a comedy had a comedy situation in it. That pissed me off. Um, there are some great some great some great stuff in here, like Richie calling Pennywise a sloppy bitch. That that was terrific. But I don't I don't always need my tension relieved. I I don't. I I want to be terrified of this creature. I want to be terrified of it. Now, another thing is, I have long said that Pennywise was just the deadlights. That he that he is the deadlights. That's what he is. I'm not sure if it's not explicitly explained in the book, but these creatures I I feel are just the light. Um, even with uh, in a Dreamcatcher with the Greys. I think it's all an illusion what these things are. We are seeing what we want to see. Same with Tommy Knockers. You know, it's it's the it's the lights. And in this one, that's pretty much what you get. You get the lights are pretty much projecting a tangible entity. Uh, that that's how it feels, anyways. Either that, or they were trying to say that they were two separate things. But that doesn't make sense because tearing out Pennywise's heart, you know, he kills him. Um, there are also whole scenes again that make no sense contextually. Uh, I want to get into that, but there are hints of the stuff that happens around Derry. We saw it, uh, you know, in, in the past. We saw it in uh, the first one with the mural, with the shootout there in Derry. Um, that, was, that was great. I like that nod. Then you see the, in this one, you see the axe that is used to kill, to kill Harry. Harry, was, I, Harry Bauer's character in this one was, the actor was amazing, but it felt like too much. In the book, it didn't feel like too much. The original 1990 version didn't feel too much. I love the actor this time, but I I've, I could have done without it if I'm honest. Um, it just wasn't. It didn't seem like a high point. And then he's it, it, he, I, I don't know, man. I I didn't I didn't like the, the I guess the character arc, but there wasn't too much different. So why didn't I like it if I like the actor? I have no idea, but it just didn't feel important enough to be there. Um, it just, it, it kind of felt like, okay, we have to wrap this up, and so they did, whereas it felt more important in the original one. Uh, with Bev, you don't get the, the utter, complete change of, it, she, she seems strong, and she seems like a, a strong person right off the bat. She seems like, you know, stand her ground, do her own thing, whereas she, in the, the book, she's she's more mousy and submissive to her abusive husband. In this one, it starts off that they're on the same same footing, and I think they did that as kind of a twist. That It's like, oh, well, you know, he's a nice guy, and then all of a sudden he snaps, but it comes out of nowhere. It makes no sense whatsoever, because um, we don't know the, this 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 character we don't understand where they're going and in the the 90 version they set that up very well at the modeling agency that kind of thing there's just there, there's so much in here that that feels rushed and I feel like that if the the uncut version might help some of it it might not help some of it um, and there's uh there there's also there there's other scenes that I don't feel are needed, um, like the uh, under the bleachers scene with Pennywise. That seemed like it, there were too, so many other scenes. That's really the only scene of horror uh, throughout the movie that doesn't have a comic relief. Um, there are so many other scenes that they could have done from the book instead of that scene. To have added that scene, that felt tacked on also. Um, it was, it was, I think it's a bad choice of what to keep and what not to keep. Uh, this this time around, but I would love to see the uncut version, and I'm still only about I don't know a day away from this movie, so I don't know. I I'm still not completely di I still haven't completely digested. So what I want to do now, if y'all are still here, <laughs> down there in the doobly doo, let's talk about this. But please put spoiler alert, um, and then give some spaces. I think it's like five or six spaces, so that it doesn't show up unless somebody clicks read more. Um. And then get, give me your thoughts on the movie. Let's discuss this because this is one of those films I, I need to sit around and talk to people about. And maybe even see it again. Um, I'm not spending money to see it in the theater. Uh, I saw it in IMAX, which was a complete waste of money. Um, that I should have just seen it at the matinee. But I wanted to see it in a big old screen and I got it. But it didn't look any different than you know just a regular screen, I didn't think. Um, 
But, uh, yeah, if, you, if you've seen I would love to talk to you about it. Let's hash this out, because I'm not still 100% sure whether or not I'm even in the middle. I may hate the movie. I don't know. The more I think about it, the more I dislike it. So that's unfortunate, but uh, I don't want to poison myself for it uh, before I see an uncut version if we ever get the uncut version. So, like I said, let's have a discussion down there in the doobly-doo. Let's bring this rambling-ass review to a close. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.